in case anybody needs it. And just remind everyone to please remain muted during the presentation. We've just got a handful of slides here and we can uh, answer questions at the end. Uh, probably the easiest, uh, easiest way to handle that. And we can take all the questions. You can also at any time post those questions uh, in the chat box for the WebEx. It's at the bottom of your screen, I believe. Um, you can put those in there if you want. May help um, as we go through the presentation. And of course, we're recording it so we can uh, share it later and put it out on the Web City website as needed. So, welcome everyone to our meeting for Beth, uh, Carol, and Merrimack uh, Storm Drain Rehabilitation Project. My name is Mike Crenshaw. I'm the project manager. Um, we also have Jane Widmer uh, as um, helping me with this. And so you've probably received emails from her. Uh, we've coordinated with several folks around the this area before the meeting, uh, excuse me, as we've worked on the project. So, so that's our purpose tonight. Um, and we'll run through kind of everything we've planned to do and then some details on different uh, parts of the project and work that'll be done and um, have any questions there at the end. We'll wait till the end if, if you could and if you want to put them in the chat too. So on the call with us, uh, of course, is myself and Jane as well as um, Justin Naylor heading up uh, the program with Linda Young at the city and uh, we'll be happy between us all I think we can get any questions that may come up uh, answered so we'll go ahead the next slide so the storm drain program on a rehabilitation program I want to mention a little bit is of course as we know the older parts of the city are reaching triple digits, uh, some of them certainly getting very close, if not over that now. And so in order to, one of the programs the city has to uh, keep these aging systems functioning uh, optimally is uh, to do some maintaining and, and times that's rehabilitating uh, the lining in these pipes. And we'll show you that pictures here in just a minute. And so to prolong their service, and we base that on several factors that are considered. Um, the age of the pipe, of course, uh, historical events uh, throughout the, the known history of them and the condition, and that's prioritized. They do a closed circuit uh, TV of the inside of the pipes and that's reviewed and cracks or protrusions or failures, et cetera, are discovered those are ranked and that helps with the prioritization uh, based on the review of those defects in the pipe and that helps us decide which pipes are eligible for rehabilitation and the goal of this is of course to keep the existing system uh, running optimally and that a part of it for this project is we're using some trenchless technology so meaning we don't have to go dig up the streets and it's minimal disturbance at the surface and so tonight um, or what we'll talk about that we're doing here for fifth and and carolyn merrimack is t actually two different applications of that pipe rehabilitation one is called cured in, in place pipe and the other is a geo polymer spray applied liner that we got a little picture to show you of each of those. So just a little background um, on what this is doing and some of the extents, and we have a map uh, to show that as well. But just to describe it is between, of course, Fifth Street, that's essentially a, now not a street. That portion is actually part of Montgomery Plaza and the retail there, but it's uh, still our pipe and the city's pipe and a drainage easement. And that portion runs from Carroll through the Montgomery Plaza to the railroads 
uh, to the east. The other portion is Merrimack Street and the portion of between Merrimack down Carroll to 5th. And as you can see, there's uh, in these illustrations here on the left, just kind of showing you what the closed circuit TV picks up from that analysis of the pipe that over time as development happens and people have attached their other storm drains to the city storm drain pipe over time, you can see how these protrusions and um, pipes that have been added in later have uh, various defects. And so that's just illustrating that. So we trim and seal those connections um, and there's a an additional lining that's put in um, to protect the surface inside surface of the pipe and to keep the soil around the pipe from coming in through those joints uh, where the pipe was put together originally as well as um, to fix any defects and that basically is the idea of, of extending the service life of the pipe and so we're doing a couple of methods um, for this, these two segments of pipe. The one on the left is the cast in place. Basically, it's like a new pipe inside of the old pipe that um, they clean it first and inspect it. And then through a process, they pull this plastic liner in and trim around the other uh, pipe connections. And it creates a an entire new surface inside of an existing pipe, essentially. And that's going down Merrimack and Carroll. And we'll look at that in a minute on the map. The other application we're doing along the 5th Street corridor is the spray applied liner. That's a large arch pipe um, that was a main trunk line for that system. And it was in good shape. Uh, it just had some... Uh, uh, cracking around the surface of it and then some intrusions and so this is a little more intensive but they spray a, apply this uh, liner inside that large arch pipe um, so just a, a quick map familiarize we're all 7th street montgomery plaza of course uh, the 5th street portion it runs through Montgomery Plaza from Carroll East to the railroad tracks. The uh, rest of it, the Merrimack and Carroll piece, That's is just uh, north of there. So we will um, look at those here in more detail. In Merrimack, uh, this is a storm drain that, that runs basically adjacent to the church there. In their parking lot and from Mercedes down to Carroll and then from Carroll uh, from Merrimack down Carroll to fifth and that'll be this cast in place essentially the new liner inside the pipe to uh, rehabilitate that piece that segment of the pipe and they work via the manholes so where there's an existing manhole near the intersection of mercedes and merrimack to the manhole that is near carroll and merrimack and then they work from the manhole at carroll and merrimack to the manhole that is at fifth and carroll so they have to take that in steps uh, it's a 30 inch storm drain line there so it's it's uh fairly small so the cast in place uh pipe works well in that situation. The next segment is uh, much larger and it's a actually an, a large arch pipe, large enough for us to walk through it. And that runs from the manhole in Carroll to all the way back behind Montgomery Plaza. And we highlighted the Chick-fil-A and the Wells Fargo Bank. So you kind of have an orientation of where you're at here. Um, and then all the way to the railroad track just before the tr railroad track right away, their property. Um, and that'll be the spray applied liner portion. And um, that portion, uh, we actually added a manhole. Some of you might remember a few months back, we had a portion of this uh, area uh, 
excavated to construct a manhole. There was no manhole between these two ends, and to do this work, we needed to add a manhole, and so that that has been done, and that construction is complete, and that's just adjacent to the drive-through of the Wells Fargo Bank, their banking drive-through right there. So that's done and constructed, and, and that was, uh, again, we needed that manhole for our city crews, normal typical maintenance and operations, as well as for this project. So that new manhole is constructed and in place. So they will be able to do this spray applied liner between those two locations. Okay, some more uh, details. Um, the uh, vortex lining uh, systems won the bid for construction. Um, they're doing the the two different types of of storm drain rehabilitation, the cast in place plastic, a uh, uh, cast in place pipe, as well as the spray applied liner on those two segments. Um, there will be temporary, so they will be working at those manholes, as we noted in the in the street. So there will will be some uh, disruption, at least for a lane um, during that time when they're set up at those given manholes. Um, and so right now we have construction uh, tentatively starting Monday and the 22nd. Uh, it'll take, we have a total contract time of four to five months total for both of these types of work. Um, the work will not be going on during that entire time. So they have several processes. They have to initially set up at the manholes and do a, a thorough cleaning. The pipe, obviously, to pull the new liner in has to be very clean. Um, they will have a time for doing repairs. Then they will come back and do the process of actually pulling the liner. And so um, there will be uh, multiple stages or processes. But for the contract purposes, because we have these this whole area under one contract, we have a total time to get this done of roughly four to, to five months. Um, and... They are in either city easements, uh, in the case of the area behind Montgomery Plaza, and or temporary construction easements, and or the city, of course, the street uh, right away, city right away for those. So I know the area has uh, is is very busy, obviously, um, very popular area, and so this is coming early in in our program because it was a high need. There's another rehab program project that is starting up on 7th, closer to downtown. And so these these um, high priority areas we're trying to uh, get to very quickly in this program. And so there will be some, again, some temporary lane closures. There will be, uh, so you'll see the, the cones or the barricade or the uh, flaggers, et cetera. There are different traffic control measures that they'll use there. Um, we're not anticipating closing any of the roads, only a lane. So it'll be a shift in the lanes. Um, and we, at this time, we're confident we can keep both lanes open for traffic. Um, if temporarily during maybe moving of equipment, et cetera, they might have a flagger to to help move things around. But the the thinking is that we'll be able to both lanes will remain open for traffic. It'll just be, of course, the typical construction inconvenience, but hopefully it will, it will be done very quickly. Um, the construction area, to ease that in the Montgomery Plaza area, we went and got additional construction uh, temporary access areas from the, uh, the retail folks that own that area and to, to be able to have a place to to work from and not and causes little disruption and minimize potentially minimize our impacts anyways in that in the Montgomery Plaza area so being very sensitive to that um, so 
that is the project and the uh, schedule. A uh, few folks to to know, of course, myself, uh, Mike Crenshaw, Jane is on as well. This call, our construction inspector for the city is Sergio, and we uh, also have our contractor uh, superintendent for the job, Jacob Nix. And that's all the presentation. We can dive deeper in any of that, and I can open it up for questions at this time. Um, kind of the best way so there's not total chaos on a meeting uh, is I'll start with the call in user because I don't see a name on that, but we'll go through and go call on people if they have any questions. If you don't, you can just stay muted. But if you do have a question, um, now's uh, the time and we can, uh, I'll start with uh, the call in user three. I don't have a name. So if you have any questions and would like to unmute yourself, um, then you can do that at this time. Or if you don't have any questions, you don't have to unmute yourself. It's always a little interesting on the WebEx sometimes when it comes to questions. All right, it looks like, uh, and if you do, you can unmute and we can skip around. I think there's another, uh, just going down the list here, sorry. Um, Joe, someone logged in as Joe. If you have any questions, you can unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Mike? Yes, yep. Great, great. Hey, yeah, um, I'm actually in the Linwood development area. It's where I live. Uh, I know from the explanation there, you talked about the liner is going to be placed in to the pipes. Uh, and I'm trying to get kind of a bearing and an idea, and you may be able to answer this, you may not. Uh, I recall a few months back, you guys were doing some work on Foch and 7th, and we had some larger pipes that were being placed there. Um, if you were a part of that project, were, can you explain what that was and how different it is compared to the one you're working on now? Um, so another part of our team was doing that, and we have CCTV'd several miles of this older line and what we found was some of those were in dire need of what they call point repairs in other words they like had a collapse or a cave in or we were afraid there was a void under the pavement and we had another incident unfortunately that made headline news with somebody's very nice car dipped down in a you know a yeah, I actually saw that. Yeah. Then so those um those were um what we call point repairs where we had to go in and and dig around and um excavate refill that void, repair the pipe, refill that void and then replace the pavement on top. And so those those were our top priority uh and we were able to get to those as quickly as we could. In fact, we have an, an on-call contractor that lets us, rather than going through the lengthy bid process, we can just literally give them work orders and they can go fix those. So that's probably what that was. Very good. And from an understanding, and I mentioned larger, but uh, was there a change in the circumference of that pipe that was replaced or was it the same size that was placed there? Yeah, th there was no change. They they um, just repair, you know, to keep it keep it operational, and just okay. do repairs. Um, and that's that's the the main focus of the storm drain rehab program. The there's a a larger process going on that Justin Naylor is uh, managing. He's actually on the call, but that is looking at uh, doing um, a, you know, a a consideration of could, you know, this pipe be larger or that pipe be larger or an add a pipe or, you know, those kinds of um, system-wide enhancements. Whereas our, our program on this, on the rehab is just 
keep what we've got functioning the way it should be functioning and, uh, you know, safely. Is, is there an impression, Mike, that uh, what you're putting in together that to keep it functioning um, and safer, is there also an expectation that it may show some improvements as far as the, the flow of water? Well, it it will may maybe not appreciably, you know, if a system is 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 undersized. But uh, part of the uh, benefit that we do get is in some of these areas where let me go back a few slides here, where these protrusions or debris or dislocated joints and things like that may have been causing the system to be slightly less efficient mm -hmm. um we're definitely getting that back kind of like uh you know rebuilding the engine in the car it's not necessarily a different car but it definitely will run better and kind of like it was intended to so that that's kind of the the extent of the storm drain rehab program just to keep it working um the larger system wide uh, parts of that is a different analysis. Understood. And that's that was kind of, you know, obviously I'm a, a few blocks to the west. I'm on Templeton. And my biggest concern, of course, is the fact that I'm one of the lowest lying spots in the neighborhood. And I've been a part of the continual issues we've been having related to the heavy rainfall. Yes, yes. And um that you know work is being done on that as well kind of simultaneously to see what can be done for that area and then you know how to fund it and all that um and i think justin is leading that effort but and there's other you know other meetings that they'll be they'll be conducting as well and understood i didn't want to monopolize yeah. i just was curious about that just to provide a quick update on that, this is this is just the mailer. Uh, the the engineering contract uh, is scheduled to go to Marin Council on uh, May twenty third. Uh, but in order to the funding to fund that large contract won't be available until June. But in order to kind of expedite getting started on the on that work, uh, we're working on a jump start contract with, our, with the same engineer. Uh, so that we can start evaluating all the flood mitigation needs and, and coming up with conceptual plan uh, for the area. So we, we are working on that. And I figured I'd, you, you'd probably be interested to hear that. Definitely. I appreciate your time, Justin and Mike as well. And, and you know, you know, this, this is again, you know, kind of within that, this project is within that storm drain rehab program, which is really kind of, if one of the focuses is, is life safety, you know, in the event that a storm drain were to fail, and kind of create a large void on the surface. That's what we're trying to avoid, or that's what we're trying to prevent here uh, proactively. Understood. Yeah, I'm looking forward to the new storm drains that they're going to actually install that uh, we've been watching during that heavier uh, rainfall and the excessive water that's come in there from the storm, uh, mm -hmm. tending to shoot up these uh, uh, storm drain covers uh, rather high in the air. All right. Well, we'll uh, thank you, Joe. We'll see. We'll just keep going down the list here. Um, Mike, there, sorry, this is Laura. Oh, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you. Mm -hmm. There is a question in the chat. I don't know if you. No, I didn't see that. Thank would you. like me to read those if they come up? Yeah, would you? Sure. Will there be any closings of parking spaces by Chick-fil-A? So I know where that is. That's off yeah. the camera, <laughs> right around Target. Yes. Uh, thank so, you, Scott. No, we have a uh, area closer to the railroad tracks um, so it's pretty good ways away from Chick-fil-A we have another area that's closer to chicken salad chick that we have worked with uh, Susan at Kimco and thank you Susan she's on um, she we worked with her team to get the uh, temporary construction easements so that's all something the contractor has at his disposal to use but it won't It'll be a ways away from Chick-fil-A and the bank, actually. Uh, 
Let me see. There's one. Um, there's uh, going down the list here on the screen. Uh, Mackie, is that right? Do you have any questions? Maybe. If not, this is Laura again, and I have another question okay. in the chat. This is from Norma. Have there been any studies to ensure that the pipes that are already being repaired are adequate to evade the flooding issues? So there, there's two efforts. Um, that's a good question. There's two efforts uh, going on simultaneously. Um, as Justin said, this effort is to keep our existing system working. Um, and Justin is, just spoke to that study and that engineering that's a take about to start that will do that analysis. So there, there's two parallel tracks going on. One, we have to keep what we got up and running, and that's what this project will do. And then he is uh, he is working on the the other aspect of that to look at the in this the system system wide look to see what can be done and how to fund it so and that was norma's question thank you norma uh let, let me go down the list before we get to the back to the chat laura uh scott smith i see you're logged in you have any questions no okay all right um there is a part two from norma if you would like me okay to... <laughs> yep. um what about taking merrimack down to one lane it is difficult to get down merrimack as it is now yes um so we are we will be uh temporarily of course we need one lane to get into the manhole and work while the work's going on, because it's trenchless, um, we don't necessarily anticipate having to close the lane. They will be temporarily down, so yes, that um, is unavoidable for that poor, you know, for during the times when when we have to do that, um, and it will be so that the contractor has traffic control, of course, plans and. Um, a whole uh, set of details and things that they'll have to follow to to make that uh, safe when it is. Um, but and and some of that will be just during the work is the goal. So I don't mean to interrupt, but this is Norma. And coming down Merrimack, there are cars parked on both sides of Merrimack 100% of the time, what will be done to ensure that if we reside on Merrimack that we will be able to get through? The um, contractor will stake a claim to some of those spots <laughs> on, uh, on Merrimack, he'll have to there at the manhole at Mercedes near the entrance to the parking lot that's on the north side of the church there. Uh, so I would say he would be in where some of those cars are parked if they're parked there all the time. But not additional, if that makes sense. So he'll be on the north side of the road at that location uh, that I just described, kind of right there. There's a Mercedes, but there's also a driveway going into the church parking lot right there um, on Merrimack. Anything else, Lars, anything else in the chat? I think you got your answer, Norma. I know you had a second part about a repair needing to be replaced. Yeah, I was just concerned that we're spending this money to do this repair and that there's another study going on to try to alleviate all the flooding issues in Linwood. So I just wanted to be sure that I heard correctly that the money being spent on this 
doesn't lead to the next study saying, well, all this has to be replaced for larger pipes. Yeah, and it's a little bit of chicken and egg. Um, Justin and I can fight it out, and we put on boxing gloves, actually, and literally fight it out. But theoretically, we would still need this system, and I think his analysis is looking more west of here at that right. portion so, of the system. Th th this is Justin again. Uh, so currently, the concept that we're going to be evaluating, or at least one of them, is, is going to be looking at a, a system in university uh, that would potentially take more runoff towards the north as opposed to kind of letting it come towards the east. Uh, which would re reduce the amount of runoff in this existing system. Uh, but, but again, we're, we're pretty early on. Uh, so the concepts that we have are, are fairly vague and, and need to be fleshed out. Uh, so th this is something that, you know, the existing system is something that we're going, going to be considerate of, you know, some options if we did wind up needing to add additional capacity down Merrimack and Carroll uh, could be potentially doing a parallel system uh, to avoid replacing uh, the the pipe that we just rehabbed, uh, you know, so th th those are some potential ideas that we're that we're going to be evaluating with our with our engineer. Norma, did did that kind of did that yes, help? Yes, thank you. Okay, well, I'll um, open it up to see if. Anyone else can raise their hand or speak up if you had questions, comments. Let me go back to the, sorry, clicking around here. Go back to our contacts. You want to jot down uh, email addresses. You can. And, uh, of course, the city inspector, he'll be boots on the ground during during the work. So Sergio, um, great to work with, and he'll be, like I said, he'll be a good contact. Um, Norma, if, if you see something going on during construction, please reach out to me or Sergio. Um, and since you, you guys live down there, um, and of course there will be a, uh, for Joe, there will be other public meetings and points of contact. I know that uh, Jennifer Dyack and, and Justin Naylor have with, with, uh, to, you know, that the other, the larger uh, flooding issues to the west of here. So there, there'll be more. In fact, you might get sick of us after a little while or get sick of Justin. Yeah, no, Jennifer, Jennifer's been a great help in making sure the information's getting out. I appreciate it. Mike, this is Jane. I would suggest that people just take a snapshot of these um, co this contact information, just in case something comes up or you have questions or concerns, you can reach out to us. Thank you. Yes, that's a great idea. Well, thank you all for joining us this evening. And again, this was recorded, so we'll be able to refer back to it if if we need to. But we're looking forward to uh, getting contractor started, going to work, and uh, making sure these these parts of the system are functioning at optimum. And if you have any questions, you can contact any of us. I don't have anything else. I'll. Uh, we can leave the meeting open here for a few minutes, but otherwise, I think that concludes it for this Thank evening. You. Thank, Thank you, Mike and Justin and Jean. Appreciate you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you all for joining us.